Good morning and welcome again to Bethel Baptist Church's 9 a.m. daily devotions. <clears throat> this morning we're going to be looking at the topic of God's immutability. That means that God is unchangeable. God's immutability. <clears throat> and so if you'd like to take your Bibles, if you have them with you this morning, and turn over to Psalms chapter 33 and verse 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. And so we see here in Psalms chapter 33 that God is fulfilling his own decrees. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Through the revolutions of the time, God never changed his measures. But in every event, even that which to us is the most surprising, the eternal counsel of, of God is fulfilled. God changes not his purpose. God changes not his decree. God is never frustrated. His designs are accomplished. God has a predestination according to the counsel of his will and none of the devices of his foes can thwart his decree for a moment's time. The thoughts of his heart are to all generations. Men come and go. Sons follow their sires to the grave, but the undisturbed mind of God on in broken serenity producing ordained results with unerring certainty. His power to fulfill his purpose is by no means diminished by the lapse of years or centuries. <clears throat> People with authority make decisions that affect the destinies of nations and when God isn't permitted to rule, then he overrules, for his will shall be accomplished in all things. He can turn the policies and plans of nations into nothingness in a moment's time. Listen to what it says in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 10. <clears throat> Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand for God be with us. Isaiah 19, 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fall in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. The will of God for his children comes from the heart of God and is an expression of his love for them. So there is no cause for us to be alarmed, concerned, or afraid. <clears throat> Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. May the church never lose the wonder of being the people of God for those that are born again. 1 John 3, 1 to 3, <clears throat> that which from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. <clears throat> For the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and show mercy to that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 40, verse 8 to 31. <clears throat> the grass withereth, 
the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. O Zion, that bring us good tidings, get thee up into the mount, high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bring us good tidings, lift up the voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall fear, shall, pardon me, shall rule for him. Behold his reward is with him and his works before him. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead them that are with young. <clears throat> Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. Who hath declared, pardon me, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor hath taught him with whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will ye liken God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished, <clears throat> that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have not ye understood from the foundations of the earth? <clears throat> it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then Will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? <clears throat> Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created, created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, and not, in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. <clears throat> when it says that word wait there, in verse 31, that means they're going to be they and we should be looking for and hoping for and expecting. When it talks about renewing here, there is a change in their lives for the better. And there needs to be a change in our lives as a born again believer for the better. 
It talks about strength. It talks about here power and in might. It talks about the word walking. That means that we need to proceed and go forth. It talks about fainting, you know, that we shouldn't faint. And that means that you, not, you and I should never be fatigued uh, where, uh, when we're in and mar- we've got our marching orders and when we're in the fight. David said, is there not a cause? There sure is. The cause of Christ is our cause and we need to take that cause on. We need to illuminate the word of God on behalf of God as the Holy Spirit takes it into the lives of sinners that they might be converted and into the lives of Christians that you and I might be continued to be transformed and be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ to the best of our ability as we put ourselves on the back burner. And so <clears throat> this morning we're looking at the topic of the immutability of God, the unchangeableness of God. The the immutability of God is an attribute of God that is unchanging in his character. It's unchanging in his will. It's unchanging in his covenant promises. There are three characteristics of God that are very prevalent within the Godhead that the Father has, the Lord Jesus Christ has, and the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit have. <clears throat> they are omnipotent. They are all powerful. They are omniscient. They are all knowing. They are omnipresent. They are everywhere at one time, which is not what you and I can do as born again believers. My challenge this morning for each of you and for myself is to live up to this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not vain in the Lord. Father, we give you thanks and praise now for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your character traits, <coughs> Lord, for your immutability, your unchangeableness. We know, Lord, we can count on you for all things and for everything, no matter how big or how small. Thank you, Lord, for your love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, sinners, you sent Christ to take our sins, past, present, and future, upon himself, to die a cruel death, Lord, to, to die for us, to be buried for us, and to rise again on the third day for us, Lord, that we might have that hope and the availability through our free will to make a decision to accept Jesus as our personal Savior, that we might one day, Lord, spend eternity with you, either through the clod or through either, either, Lord, through death or through you coming back and taking the church in. And so we give you thanks and praise now for your goodness and your mercy as I already prayed. Separate us with your blessing. Help us to continue on and think on these things, Lord. Think about you through the rest of the day. And we ask these things in Christ's name.